Now, the last thing we want to add to this section is actually the exact same thing we did at the end of activity three. We're going to choose our lasso tool and I'm just going to go around. I like to have the dots and the reason I like to have the dots instead of just doing things freehand is that afterwards if I want to change the dots around while I'm going, it's easy to do. So I'm just going to come around the shoulders of these gentlemen. And these are all the beautiful spaces that I have removed our little blue riding hood from. And now as I select these areas, and they give me those lovely circular handles to deal with. What I'm going to do here is just ever so slightly, almost exactly the same. So here when I come back to start at the beginning, I'll click that and I'll get my moving selection. Almost exactly the same as activity three. I'm going to choose filters and blur and Gaussian blur. Again, I'm just choosing Gaussian blur because it has a great preview window. All right. And for this one, again, five is way too high. I'm going to go to 1.3. And when I click away, it changes both sides. And I'm going to hit OK. So what I want you to notice inside this area here is it's only blurred inside the selection, which is good. We learned that in activity three. But I'm going to do Control Z to see the snowflakes and then Control Y, Control Z, Control Y. And so that you can see where the blur has affected so control Y, there's with the blur, control Z, there's without the blur, where the blur is affected, and you can see where the snowflakes have lost a lot of their uh, clarity. Now, if I view this, right now I'm at 300%, you can see down here, I'm gonna change that to 100%, okay? And I'm gonna set my selection to none. This is really important later on, select none. So now I don't have any moving lines. That means I can edit the rest of my picture. But more importantly, I'm going to choose a Control Z. Oh, the selection comes back, of course. And then Control Y and Control Z. And you can see that it doesn't make too much of a difference from zooming back at 100%. Okay. So I'm going to choose to leave the blur because I can still see the snowflakes. And that was the whole point, by the way, of this, was that if I blur it out so badly that you can't see the snowflakes anymore, then I've failed. Uh, the snowflakes really add the texture to this picture. So you can, once you've tried the blur, you can choose, because it's so slight of a blur, you can choose whether you want to keep the blur as it is or whether you want to leave no blur so that the snowflakes still have their full um, richness and texture added to this picture.